This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. This is Isabel Melgarejo, and this is a Time to Care the Caregivers podcast. I've been a caregiver for almost 20 years, and I love sharing with you my experiences during this time. Hope you find them useful and you get a lot out of these conversations. I gave a webinar about a month ago. This is one of the questions that someone made during that webinar. And that was, how do I say no? And how do I build boundaries? I wanted to answer this question for all of you. Let's get started. This question was made to me during a webinar. And I think it would be great if we could talk more about this question. Because I know that many of us struggle with saying no, especially when we are people pleasers and we're always saying yes and we're burnout and we don't know what to do next. Bad news first. (laughs) You're not going to make anybody happy by saying no. The only person that you're going to make happy is yourself. And the rest of the world is going to complain. They're not going to be happy. They might tell you something and that something might not be nice. <laughs> Sorry I'm laughing, but there is no way of of making this less painful. And I do want to make this less painful for you. And also, we just have to accept that people won't be happy when we say no. Especially If we've been saying yes all the time for years and years and years and they are just expecting us to do whatever we've been doing. That's the harsh truth and it's out there. There's no way to go around it. Just We just have to face it. That being said, the truth reality being out there. What if you still want to say no? Even though the someone is going to complain, someone's not going to be happy, and you might get a lot of hit out of it. If you still want to say no, and you are willing to get all of the hit for saying no, then stay for this podcast. And if you're not willing to get all of the hit, you should still stay for this podcast because I think it's worth it. It's worth it when you say no and it's worth it when you build boundaries. How do you say no? First of all, you have to accept that people are not going to be happy. And that is key because you're going to be prepared for the worst. And when you're prepared for the worst, then you can act accordingly. You can make changes. You know that you're expecting the worst, so you can prepare for the worst. And most of the time, the worst is not going to happen, but it may. So it's better if we prepare for that. And how do you say no again? Well, it's, you just say it. You just say no. Sometimes you might want to give an explanation of why you're saying no. And sometimes you don't have to explain yourself. So first of all, we need to learn that we are not responsible for the feelings of anybody else. That being said, building your strength on how to say no 
is all based on knowing that you're not responsible for anybody's feelings. They might feel very well when you say something, and they might not feel very well when you say other things. But you are not responsible because there are times that whatever we say, it's gonna be bad. There's people that damn if you do and damn if you don't. We just need to accept that we don't have control over how other people feel. The reason why this is so important is because the only feelings that matter is how you feel. And I'm not saying that we should be assholes and be rude to other people. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't care. And because we don't care, we are hurting, we're purposely hurting other people's feelings. What I'm saying is that we need to put our feelings first. And I learned this when I was very young. My siblings were 11, 13, where they are, they are still are 11, 13, and 15 years older than me. I had to learn not to let their comments hurt me. Usually when siblings are young, they all fight and they all have the same chances of winning. When there is an 11-year gap and your, especially your brothers are teasing you and bugging you all the time, you kind of create a different way to showing them that you don't care because there is no way in which you're going to outsmart them. and You're not going to be stronger than them. And when you are barely able to talk, like you're not going to be able to outsmart them with words. So I learned this when I was very young. I just never showed how I really felt so they wouldn't bug me. And I was just dealing with those feelings myself. The same happens with us adults. We just show our feelings, but it really doesn't matter what people are telling us because we need to be responsible for how we feel. If someone insults us on the street, that might upset us for a time being, but we don't drag those feelings over a long period of time. We just leave them there because it's someone we don't care and we don't know and we forget easy, easily what happened. But when it is a loved one, we keep dragging these feelings and we shouldn't be responsible for those feelings. The same happens with our loved ones. So we need to accept that they will have to deal with their feelings however they see fit. And maybe you want to have this conversation with your loved one and just let them know that you're going to be protecting your feelings and your well-being first. Having a difficult conversation with someone is about knowing what we want to communicate. If we go back to, I don't know, elementary school, probably second or third grade, when we were learning how to communicate and the parts of communication there was always this part called the message. And if you remember well, there was two parties involved, a mission and a media in which that message was conveyed. And we often forget about the message. We, we kind of think about the two people. We kind of like the media. We're talking. This, this conversation is a podcast. If you're talking with someone, then it is, you can talk, you can write a letter, you can text. There's so many ways. And we often forget that what we want to communicate is very important and what we want to get out of that communication. So when we are communicating or wanting to say no about certain things and trying to build boundaries around certain situations in our lives, that is going to accommodate some people because that means that they will have to do something about their feelings and they will have to do something about the things that you were doing. 
there are several ways in which you can solve this issue. One is just saying no and that's it. Most people in this sort of world in which you're a caregiver and you want to give the best side of yourself and you really care about other people's feelings and whatnot, that's not going to be enough. Probably you're not going to feel comfortable just saying no. So because I know that you won't be feel comfortable saying just saying no, you might want to try some of the other tactics that I'm going to say. You can try to share with your loved one why you're saying no and explain yourself and help that person understand your point of view. They can either understand your point of view or they can't. That is up to them. If, if they want to understand your point of view, then that's great. You have done a great achievement because they will be happy to understand why you're saying no and they will understand your point of view and they might even give you suggestions on what other things you can do. I understand not everybody is like that and maybe your loved one are, is still upset by you saying no. Another thing that you can do is Invite other people into the equation and invite someone else to do that thing that you no longer want to do. So you're providing a solution for them and you are providing another person to do the things that you were doing and you don't want to do anymore. So that's another method of you saying no to something. Just delegating it to somebody else. A third way in which you might want to approach this subject is by brainstorming solutions. You are still going to say no and that is a non-negotiable. Here you have to really pay attention to what you're willing and not willing to give. This conversation is a negotiation. We negotiate all the time. Even when we don't know that we're negotiating, we are. And even when, when we think that we, maybe we think that we're really bad negotiators, I don't think you are because we negotiate all the time, every day. We negotiate and we make a lot of decisions and we just do them all the time. So you're really good at it, even when you don't think you are. So you can brainstorm and negotiate ways in which you can solve this situation. You can probably find solutions that you had never thought of if you start communicating the reason why you don't want to do certain things anymore. And you just put it out there and get people and your loved one to brainstorm ways in which the subject could be approached and solved. Those are three things and three ways in which you can say no. Well, actually, it's four. You can just say no and let the consequences happen without you caring and without you, you are going to care because you're a caregiver, but without paying any additional attention to the consequences, you can find somebody else, you can tell your, your reasoning, or you can brainstorm. Either way, I think it is great to build those boundaries, and I think it is essential for us to understand what we're willing to do and what we're not. And I think we all need those non-negotiables that we are either going or not going to do. If you need help finding those non-negotiables and if you need a guide on how to have difficult conversations, go to my website tomcore.com and download the guide on how to have difficult conversations. And that will help you build those boundaries. Thank you so much for joining me today and talk to you next week.
This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time.